Good afternoon, my name is Vanina Fissore. I'm a researcher at ITACA, a center of applied research devoted to support humanitarian activities in response to natural disasters by means of remote sensing techniques. ITACA is based in Italy. The work I'm going to present today regards the possible improvements offered by aerial LiDAR technology in the knowledge of avalanche phenomena. This last can in fact provide high resolution information about topography, which is one of the main factors influencing avalanche formation and behavior through the identification and characterization of more impervious zones. So in this context, the present work describes an operative application of the use of a high point density area LiDAR data in support to avalanche events prevention and risk mitigation. The study area is located at the Italian-French state border along an important cross-border communication route. The name of the, of the locality is Colle della Maddalena, nearby the village of Argentera. As you can see from the pictures, the area has a very complex geomorphology with very high slope values. Due to the extreme environmental conditions, no tree vegetation cover is present for majority of the area. Here, in the winter season, enduring heavy snowfalls, a big part of the road is involved in intense avalanche events that negatively impact on local and border traffic. At present, in order to maintain the safety conditions of the road, regular closure periods occur quite often and can be very long, with consequent negative effects on socio-economic activities. So for this reason, regional administration decided to adopt a control activity on priority areas together with artificial detachment methods. The artificial detachment of the snowpack at a certain time will in fact reduce the road closing time span and of course minimize the risk related to people and road safety. For this reason, regional administrations have had activated the Avalanche Artificial Detachment Intervention Plan in order to prevent and manage the avalanche risk in the study area. The plan provides a detailed description of the area with, with specific focus on avalanche sites, identifying 14 of these last as actually affecting the cross-border route annually. Moreover, the plan describes artificial detachment systems to be used and the methodology followed during artificial snowpack detachment. Specifically, detachment procedures within identified avalanche sites will be activated at a certain threshold of snowpack depth corresponding to 30 cm. This will guarantee to generate smaller and controlled snow mass movements and consequently to avoid the formation of excessive snow thickness from which greater avalanche could generate. The threshold will be observed directly from the road by remote observation on ad hoc snow pose markers positioned within the highest parts of the detachment areas of avalanche sites. When this threshold is observed, then detachment procedures are activated with simultaneous closure of the road, so as to avoid the danger and risk of larger proportions avalanche formation. With these premises, main aim of the present work was first to provide a high quality geomorphological characterization of the area necessary for involved authorities to activate the artificial detachment intervention plan and second to investigate capabilities and limits of the LiDAR technology in the identification of avalanche sites only relying on geomorphological information directly derived by LiDAR data processing. Performed analysis regarded first a series of basic cartographic data contained within the intervention plan Specifically, a geodatabase containing feature classes was adopted. Contained informa information are relative to general information about the area, such as road network, administrative limits, 
land cover and hydrology, and to more specific information regarding avalanche sites, such as snowpack detachment areas positions, avalanche extension identified by different methods, snow pole positions, artificial detachment system positions, etc. So all these data were used as reference data managed in, in a GIS environment and used to validate the other data derived from LiDAR data processing. As regard to LiDAR data acquisition, the Aerial LiDAR mission was carried out on the 6th of October 2019, before the beginning of the winter season and before any snowfall event. Brown LiDAR point cloud was pre-processed using Terrascan application. For point cloud classification and filtration, due to the morphological and vegetation characterization of the slope, a geometrical LiDAR classification was preferred instead of a full waveform data processing. The slope, in fact, mainly presents exposed rocks with no vegetation, with a small isolated spot of bushes and some conifer trees. For this reason, the 80% of the dataset taken can be considered as ground point cloud with small areas that meet more classification algorithms. Digital terrain models and digital surface model with uh, 0 0.5 meters pixel sites were then obtained. Figures shows uh, the part of the slope presenting tree cover vegetation so has to appreciate the difference between the two data. In order to better characterize the area from a geomorphological point of view, some terrain analyses were performed with SAGAGES. The obtained DTM was used to um, compute slope, aspect, wind exposure and convexity, and then some descriptive statistics computed for the avalanche detachment areas contained within available reference data. As you can see, all detachment areas are within the range of 30 and 14 degrees of slope and mainly some southwest oriented. As regard to the convexity analysis, values above zero normally describes convex profiles, while values below zero concave profiles. Reported statistics shows that majority of detachment areas have positive values, thus convex profile. Obtained wind exposition index values show that all detachment areas present positive values above 1, so are exposed to wind, whereas no accumulation due to wind action is in fact more likely. Moreover, a flow accumulation analysis was computed for the area to identify the watershed's position in order to show if, with the only use of LiDAR-derived data, identification of position of already known avalanche sites was achievable. So surface depressions within the input DTM were first identified and then filled for the whole area by using the fill sink module. Subsequently, the accumulated flow was obtained by using the flow accumulation module. Validation of obtained results was then performed through comparison by overlapping with available reference cartographic data. Results show that areas crossed by avalanche events were well identified. Consequently, the channel network generation of the study area was possible as demonstrated by evaluation of reference cartographic data, as you can see in the map on the right. The analysis identified all the areas crossed by avalanche events reported in the intervention plan, providing information about the position of the avalanche sites. Instead, no information was achievable about the extension of the potential sliding area, since this last also depends on snow parameters such as snow depth, snowpack structure and other. Finally, in order to understand if LiDAR derived data by themselves were sufficient to identify potential avalanche detachment areas only relying on geomorphological parameters, a graphical grid covering the whole study area was generated. 
statistics about mean values of slope, aspect, convexity, and wind exposure when then computed within the graticule cells with the aim of identifying potential retouchment errors. Results, as displayed in the map, shows that almost all detachment areas of the reference data were identified, but also that a great overestimation of this last is present. Again, metric parameters about snowpack structure results to be necessary. As requested by regional authorities involved in the avalanche control activities, the high-resolution three-dimensional terrain model of the study area was also obtained by using global mapper software. Main conclusion of the work can be that the processing of LiDAR data permitted to obtain high-resolution derived data, in particular high-resolution terrain models were generated and geomorphological characterization of the area was obtained. High resolution three dimensional digital terrain models were, were also obtained. Then a second kind of analysis was performed to understand capabilities and limits of the LiDAR technology in the identification of the potential avalanche detachment areas only relying on geomorphological information directly derived by LiDAR data processing. Obtained results showed that position of the avalanche sites were correctly identified. While no information could be obtained about the extension of the sliding areas, since this last also depends on snow parameters. The same can be said for detachment areas identification, not possible only considering geomorphological parameters. Potentialities of the adopted approach can be identified in the following. A further area LiDAR acquisition during the winter season and with the snow presence on the ground would allow to know snowpack elevation value and the knowledge of such value would permit consequently to derive snow depth information at detachment areas and then better identify together with already computed geomorphological parameters potential detachment areas. Then area LiDAR acquisitions done before and after an avalanche event would permit to apply a change of detection analysis allowing the measurement of the extension of detachment and sliding areas. Thank you for your attention.